What's up, everybody? This is the second time I'm doing a vlog here on Natter Eats. I'm going to get a little more comfortable as I do them. And for now, I'm just trying things out with a very, very plain background, not walking around so I can focus on what I'm doing. I've been thinking about things that I should or could talk about. And one question that I get every so often is like, what are some different jobs that I've held in the past? Uh, I think a lot, some of you, maybe not a lot of you, but a lot of you um, who follow me on YouTube know that I teach high school and I've done that since like 2007, I think. Time flies, like it's crazy how long it's actually been. This Monday, in just a couple days now, I'm going to be beginning my seventh year teaching high school. It's, that's insane. I can't believe time has passed that fast. But um, going way back to when I was a freshman in college, that's when I held my first job. I actually tried to apply for jobs when I was in high school, but I just couldn't get hired. I don't know what it was. Um, I applied pretty much everywhere, you know, fast food places, um, department stores, uh, Target, uh, places in malls. But when I was like 18, 19, nobody really wanted anything to do with me. But at 21, when I was at UCLA, I applied for a job at this little restaurant on campus. I believe it was called North Campus. It was next to another restaurant called Northern Lights. And it was like one of these multi-station restaurant type things. There was a sandwich making place, which is kind of like Subway. Um, there was a Mexican food station. There was a burger station that tried to make basically in and out ripoffs. There was an Italian station and then there was a pizza station. I did really well at all of these stations, except for the Mexican food station. The one thing I could just never master was wrapping up a burrito. I think it's just because I would fill it up too much and like the thing would explode as soon as I folded it. And of course, we were responsible for like everything, uh, you know, talking to customers, making their food to order. And we would also have to cook. Like when I was on the, on the hamburger station, like we had to like fry the French fries. We had to fry the chicken nuggets. We had to fry the chicken patties. We had to go to the grill and actually like flip burgers. Obviously, the sandwich station is self-explanatory. We had to make sandwiches, um, whatever the customer wanted on them. If they wanted them toasted, we had to do that. And I remember even having to slice like the big blocks of like turkey and pastrami and so on on the actual like slicer machine. So I actually have some really weird food experience that doesn't often show up in what else I do in life. I didn't work in there too long. Uh, my next job, I believe, was at Fry's Electronics. Took me a while to find another job. Um, I worked at Fry's Electronics. I was one of the front checkout dudes. I never worked on the floor, and in case you're not you're not familiar with Fry's, because there's not a ton of Fry's electronics around the country. Fry's is pretty much like imagine if Walmart and Best Buy merged and became one store. Like it's pretty much a gigantic electronics store that looks like a department store. It's it's ginormous. Like they have every type of computer and electronic gadget that you could possibly imagine, and their prices are fairly competitive. Um, the the interesting things about working there were the fact that that's what got me used to wearing a like shirt and tie because that was the dress code there. White shirt, any color tie, but it had to be a white shirt and you had to wear black shinable shoes. Um, I guess a funny story there is one day, I don't know why, I decided not to shave. Actually, it had, it had probably been two days since I was shaving. They didn't have a policy against beards, but they did have a policy against like letting your beard grow if you happen to be like clean. And we happened to have a new department manager. And I don't know why, the guy just didn't like me a whole lot. So one day he's like, uh, Natter, can you come over here and talk to me? And like, he was a really big guy. He was even taller than me. And I remember walking up to him. And I mean, I think he, he tried to do that whole thing where he talks really close to you to try to be intimidating, which I don't know. I just think it's a bunch of BS. But he's like, yeah, you uh, need to shave. And I was like, um, okay, like. I don't have a razor with me. Like, what am I supposed to do? And he's like, well, we sell razors here. And I was like, oh, crap. And you guessed it. I had to buy a razor. We had one on sale. I think that was like 20 bucks. And on my lunch break, we went down to like, I don't know, Carl's Jr. or something. And in the bathroom there, I actually shaved. Came back and he said, otherwise, well, the thing is, he said, if you don't shave today, we're going to send you home and write you up. So I guess, you know, things are serious.
And uh, of course, I actually, uh, a couple days later, I returned the razor because I already had two at home. I don't need a third one. Let me think about what else. I'm getting a power saving more warning there. Um, after Fry, Fry's was pretty much as a department store. Like, you'd ring people up. Um, there was just a whole shtick about how you had to greet customers. Like, when they come up to your register, you go, Hi, how are you? Did you find everything you were looking for? And then you just scan them up. Uh, we had a scanning gun. And then, you know, when it was time to um, check them out, you'd print the receipt. They'd have to sign it if they um, did a, a credit card purchase. And you had the whole spiel that you had to tell them on the way out. Uh, thank you for choosing fries. Please show your receipt on the way out and have a good day. And I think fries, more than any other job, is what kind of got me in the mode of dealing with people professionally and just like honing in some really good customer service skills. And that's actually one of the best things that I think I have going for me, like in my job, like toolkit till today. Um... Another job that I worked about this a little after, actually I quit fries and then I went over and worked for 24 hour fitness while I was working on my teaching credential. I worked out before, but this is the first time I'd actually worked at a gym. I just worked the front desk at 24 hour fitness. Again, really simple customer service job. You just greet people as they come in and you just ask to see their ID to make sure that they weren't like, you know, trying to be somebody else and use somebody else's ID. Um, and of course, like all these customer service jobs, you should you seem to have this like really scripted like shtick when it comes to answering the phone because we'd get tons of phone calls. People just like ask, "What time do you close?" Because we weren't one of those uh, centers that were open twenty four seven. Like this was back in Buena Park, they had an active location that closed. I want to say like at ten or eleven p.m. on the weekends, and people were always asking because for some reason everybody would just forget. And. But there were other questions. People would often ask, like, you know, how much is membership, blah, blah, blah. So, and I remember the shtick on the phone there was, it's a great day to get in shape here at 24 Hour Fitness. This is Natter. How am I a director call? And, like, that's how you had to answer. And, like, it's not like you could just screw around because sometimes we would get calls from, like, district managers or, or like, corp corporate offices. And if you didn't uh, answer the phone the way that you were supposed to, like, you could get written up, so... Duties there were really easy. The hard, hardest part was you just you were supposed to stand up at the front desk for your entire shift. And uh, let's just say we all didn't do that. And while I was working at 24 Hour Fitness, I also worked part-time as a substitute teacher. Um, that was one of the stupidest jobs I'd ever worked. That gave me my first taste, first experience with working with, um, you know, kids, working with um, students in classrooms. And it's a stupid experience, mostly because of how bad most of the students treat you. You're the sub. It's like, oh boy, it's a sub day. We're, we're going to get to have fun and raise hell. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, I didn't like the way they would treat me. I mean, there was, most of the kids were good. Like, that's the thing. Most of the kids that you would run in, across in substitute, substitute teaching are actually good kids. It's just the, the few, the few that like to raise a little hell. That, those are the ones that made it so bad. I remember one kid actually wanted to fight me. That was the stupidest thing ever. He was like this, he was this bigger kid and he would just sit in the desk and he didn't want to do any of the work. And the teacher had actually left a lesson plan for the stuff for these guys to do. And I was like, you know, I'm not your teacher, but your teacher wants you to do this. So let, let's just make it easier on both of us. And he's like, what, you want me to kick your ass? There is no manual, you know, when it comes to substitute teaching, at least for the district where I worked. So it's kind of like a personal thing where you just got to, you got to sink or swim. You got to figure out what you're doing. And I was like, you know what, just go, you want to, you want to fight me? Just go for it. And I just laughed at him and he didn't do anything. <laughs> like, it's, it's so stupid. Like, I guess nobody ever called him out, but yeah, that's how that ended. And of course I went on to teaching high school after that, um, and that is actually a the experience of learning to teach high school and teaching high school is an entire series of videos unto themselves. Um, I teach high school history, which includes like government, economics, world history, U.S. history, and if possible, like psychology, sociology, and anthropology. The social science credential is pretty pretty vast and, and wide. Um, 
though all those experiences though really deserve like their own treatment so i'm not going to tr i'm not going to like you know do a bad job telling you what teaching high school is like um, it's a very rewarding experience i wouldn't trade it for anything uh, probably not even for youtube glory i i whatever happens here on youtube this is just fun and games i mean i i can't see myself not teaching high school not working with young people and just just seeing what you know after seeing the effect that my own teachers in my school career, high school, college, and what have you, had effect on me, it's very rewarding to have that, like, to be able to do the same. Even though sometimes I don't feel like I'm having that effect. There's times where I wonder, like, what did I do today? Like, I don't think I, I did anything of value, but uh, time and again, the kids come back or, or they'll come and tell you something and, and it just turns things around. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click thumbs up and subscribe to Natter Eats because there's more vlogs coming on the way. And if you dig insane food challenges, food reviews, and just weird food stuff in general, head over to my other channel, Freak Eating. Links to both are in the description section below. Until next time, stay in school. Don't do drugs and eat like a freak.